Did JFK die at the hands of a secret CIA sleeper agent? Did Princess Diana really die in nothing more than a freak accident? Let's talk about it. So, did the CIA order and orchestrate a hit on former President John F. Kennedy? Well, maybe. On November 22nd of 1963, a man named Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested for the assassination of the 35th President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, in Dallas, Texas. Two days later, Oswald himself was killed by a nightclub owner named Jack Ruby. In the 1960s, 50% of the American population believed that Oswald had not acted alone. In 2017, that percentage rose to 61, and today, more than two-thirds of Americans believe there is more to the story than the government is letting on, and a large number of those people believe that the CIA had something to do with it. Why? Well, because just one month prior to President Kennedy's death, he had made the decision to withdraw the first contingent of U.S. military forces from Vietnam. This decision sparked controversy and outrage from hardline military advocates. Advocates, and it also came just two years after President Kennedy's failed Bay of Pigs invasion. It is believed that in relation to these two things, and to keep Kennedy from pulling any other troops out of overseas wars, the CIA actually hired Lee Harvey Oswald to kill Kennedy, and then Jack Ruby to kill Harvey in order to keep the secret as, well, a secret. Interestingly enough, there are a number of classified files pertaining to Kennedy's death being kept at the White House, and almost every president to get elected goes into the White House swearing to declassify these files, but they walk away acting as though they don't exist. Coincidence or cover up? You tell me. On August 31st of 1997 in Paris, Princess Diana, Dottie Fayed, and her driver Henry Paul and bodyguard Trevor Reese Jones suffered a fatal car accident. The bodyguard was the only survivor. Princess Diana and Dottie Al Fayed were in a romantic relationship. They'd been vacationing together in the French Riviera when they were relentlessly followed by swarms of paparazzi. As they left the Ritz Hotel in Paris, their car was chased by photographers on motorcycles. Cycles, the car lost control, crashing into a concrete pillar. Now, there are a number of conspiracies surrounding Princess Diana's death, but the darkest has to be that the royal family themselves were behind the accident. Princess Diana had recently divorced Prince Charles, and leading up to her death, she was apparently concerned that something was going to happen to her. In October of 1996, Diana wrote a letter to her butler, and in part of the letter she talked about how she felt in danger that she believed someone was planning to tamper with her car. So was the royal family so disapproving of Diana's new potential marriage that they organized this incident and then covered it up to look like an accident? Let us know your thoughts down below. All right, let's talk about America's favorite conspiracy theory, the theory that the moon landing was fake. Did you know that 5% of Americans strongly believe the moon landing was fake? And honestly, I don't blame them. First of all, all of the supposed footage from the first moon landing was somehow miraculously erased. Sure. And then it was equally as miraculously recovered. However, it is clear that the footage has been altered, but that's okay because the government had to alter the footage in order to recover it. <laughs> I call BS. Also, while Neil Armstrong was supposedly filming Buzz Aldrin on the moon, he can be seen in Aldrin's glasses holding nothing. No camera, no kind of recording device whatsoever. And then of course, there is the fact that multiple astronauts, including Gus Grissom, have straight up said that the moon landing was fake. I guess the real question isn't, was it fake? It's, why was it faked? And for that, have an answer. The geopolitical space race. Simply put, America was in a pissing contest with Russia during the 1960s. Furthermore, the American government believed that the lunar achievement would lead to an increase in foreign investments. A few pretty good reasons to fake the moon landing, if you ask me. One of the most famous and controversial historical conspiracies is that the US government had advanced knowledge that there was going to be an attack on Pearl Harbor. This, this information was just withheld. In order to anger the American public and get them on board with America getting involved in the war. 
On the morning of December 7th of 1941, Japan launched a surprise attack on the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, leading the United States to enter World War II. But some people think that President Roosevelt knew about the attack in advance and let it happen on purpose. He wanted the U.S. to join the war against the Axis powers, but he faced a lot of opposition at the time. A lot of the American public wanted to stay out of the conflict. So what would ignite people's anger, unite them, and drive them into supporting the fight? An attack on American soil. And the attack did rally the American public, leading to a declaration of war against Japan and shortly after Germany and Italy. But what are your thoughts on this one? Did the president really sacrifice the lives of over 2,300 people as justification for American involvement in the war? Here's a fun one. There is a secret government base filled with treasure hidden behind Mount Rushmore. While this might sound like the plot of the movie National Treasure, it is important to note that the theory has actually been around for far longer than the film. The idea of a secret base came to be after a secret base was built inside of the monument, directly behind Abraham Lincoln's head. Okay, not a secret base, but a small room. The door to the room was 18 feet high, and the room itself was 74 feet long with 35 foot tall ceilings. It was built by the original artist behind Mount Rushmore, Gutzon Borglum, who had hoped that one day the room would store important American documents. Unfortunately, Borglum died just one year after the project started, and so the room was abandoned or so they say. Many people believe that Borglum's dreams were in fact fulfilled and furthermore expanded upon, and that the monument now houses an entire secret government base that is home to some of the country's most diabolical secrets. There's a pretty wild conspiracy theory about Queen Elizabeth I, that she was actually a man in disguise. The story goes that when Elizabeth was a young girl, she was sent away to a small village called Bisley to avoid the plague, but she ended up catching it anyway and died. The servant then freaked out because if her father, King Henry VIII, found out, they'd be in big trouble. So according to the theory, they found a young boy who looked like her and dressed him up as Elizabeth to take her place. The ruse worked, King Henry somehow didn't notice, and this fake Elizabeth grows up and becomes queen. Small piece of evidence here is that she never married or had children, and, and, and people described her at the time having sort of masculine features. I think most people today find this one pretty ridiculous. The idea that a father would not recognize the fact that his daughter was swapped Especially with a young boy, I mean, that's kind of laughable, but even if we are to entertain the whole attempting a ruse like this in the first place, you'd think they'd make their lives easier and just find a girl that looked like Elizabeth. All right, I have most definitely mentioned Tesla's death ray on this channel before, and that is because it is both fascinating and terrifying. In 1943, Tesla had brought the idea of a death ray, a massive particle beam that could incinerate entire armies within minutes, even at extremely far distances, to many of the world governments, including the government of the United States and the Soviets over in Russia. According to both America and Russia, the thing was never actually built. But when Tesla died, American forces collected all of the research that Tesla had left in his two New York hotel rooms as well as his American storage units. America claimed to have found no sufficient information about the death ray, but of course, America lies. Many people actually believe that Tesla either completed the ray while he was still alive, meaning it's currently in the hands of either Russia or America, or that Americans used his research to create it themselves. Either way, I'm terrified. I hope the world doesn't go boom. Marilyn Monroe died in 1962 at the age of 36. Officially, it was ruled that she'd taken her own life, having overdosed on sleeping pills either on purpose or by mistake, but some people believe there's more to it than that. One theory is that Monroe was killed because she knew too much about powerful people. Specifically, that she was rumored to have been in an affair with President Kennedy, and when she threatened to expose it all, she was disposed of. Essayist Frank A. Kappel first made these allegations in 1964 in his self-published work, The Strange Death of Marilyn Monroe. He also accused President Kennedy of having communist ties, along with other people who were close to Marilyn Monroe. Now, Kappel wasn't the only one who thought this. Over the years, tons of writers started putting their own conspiracy theories forward surrounding her death, a lot of them involving President Kennedy. Some think the FBI or CIA were actually the ones who who carried out the act, some think the mob was responsible, and people still question the circumstances of her death 
to this day. Paul McCartney died in the 1960s and was replaced with a lookalike who has been touring with the Beatles ever since. This conspiracy theory began in November of 1966, which is when many fans believe Paul had his head ripped from his shoulders in a car accident after getting into an argument with his bandmates and leaving the studio. The conspiracy theory goes on to explain that fearing for the band's future, the group devised a plan to replace Paul with a lookalike and then to completely cover up the fact that he had died on November 9th of that same year. Throughout the Beatles' post-Paul career, they apparently dropped numerous hints in their album artwork and in their song lyrics alluding to the singer-songwriter's death. If you were around in the 60s, I want to know what you think about this whole thing and if you weren't, go ask your parents their thoughts and then go ahead and drop those thoughts down below. People have been pondering the true identity of Jack the Ripper for nearly 150 years. For all the suspects that have been mentioned over the years though, the strangest has to be the man behind one of the strangest pieces of literature in history, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Yes, at one time Lewis Carroll was accused of being Jack the Ripper. In 1996, author Richard Wallace came out with a book called Jack the Ripper, Lighthearted Friend, where he outlined this conspiracy. Essentially, he wrote about how Lewis Carroll lived fairly close to where the killings took place, and that Carroll had apparently inserted anagrams into his work that were clues about his truly a violent nature. Uh, yep, yeah, so the book's been highly criticized. I mean, anagrams as evidence? I don't know. I feel like anyone can just rearrange letters in a piece of writing and have it spell out an ominous message. You could probably do that. Uh, someone should do that here with my uh, little spiel. See what you come up with. Well, I don't believe all of them, but I might believe some. There's some, definitely some truth to some of these, yeah. for sure. Marlon Monroe one is a suspect. Same thing with the, uh, uh, the queen. The queen, yeah, definitely. Let us know what your thoughts are on these conspiracies and others down below. We'll uh, see you soon. Cheers.